Hello everyone, welcome back to my emergency medicine channel. Today I have come with the topic Brugada syndrome. All to know about Brugada syndrome from emergency medicine department. Today we will be talking about what is Brugada syndrome, what is its diagnostic criteria, what is the scoring system, how to evaluate and manage. So let's start. Uh, Brugada syndrome it is an autosomal dominant inherited arrhythmic disorder uh, which is characterized by ECG changes of C elevation with successive negative T waves in the right precordial lead without cardiac structural abnormality. Patients are at risk of sudden cardiac death due to ventricular fibrillation. Moreover, these patients are predisposed to suffering from concurrent cardiac abnormalities like right bundle branch block, first degree AV block, sick sinus syndrome, and uh, interventricular conduction delay. Worldwide, it accounts to 4 to 12 percent of sudden cardiac death, out of which type 1 Brugada syndrome occurs in 12 out of 10,000. Uh, people and type 2 and 3 occurs in 58 out of 10,000. It is more prevalent in Southeast Asians. Average age of presentation of Brugada syndrome is 41 years, wherein men are affected more frequently than women, that is 9 is to 1 ratio. So, it typically occurs in the night uh, when there is predominance of vehicle activity. Next, coming to types, there are three types basically. The type 1, the curved pattern, wherein there is an RS complex followed by at least 2 mm of concave ST elevation, which descends into an inverted T wave or as senior which descends into an inverted T wave and symmetric T waves. Type 2 is a saddle bag wherein uh, we see an RSR uh, dash complex wherein the R dash is at least 2 mm elevated uh, from the baseline and followed by saddle bag ST elevation and positive T wave and the terminal portion of the ST segment is 1 mm above the baseline as seen here in the type 2 pattern wherein this is 2 mm elevated and the terminal portion is at least 1 mm elevated above the baseline. Next coming to the type 3 it is similar to type 2 except the ST segment is less than 1 mm above the baseline as seen here. It is less than 1 mm above the baseline. Next, uh, coming to the diagnostic criteria. Diagnostic criteria of Brugada syndrome consists of that is detection of typical ECG abnormality and the clinical characters. So, if the patient has a type 1 ECG in presence or absence of sodium channel blocker, in addition to this ECG abnormality, one of the following criteria is necessary that is history of VT or VF, syncope, family history of sudden cardiac death, family history of code type ECG, agonal respiration during sleep, inducibility of VT or VF during EPS. So, the appearance of just the ECG features without this clinical uh, characteristics will be termed as idiopathic Brugada ECG pattern. Next coming to if the patient has type 2 or type 3 ECG pattern in more than one right precordial lead with conversion to type 1 after the challenge with sodium channel blocker that is considered equivalent to case 1 as above wherein ECG change along with the clinical characteristic should be present. If there is no change in ST segment elevation after the sodium channel blocker then it is unlikely to be Brugada syndrome and if the drug induced ST elevation is less than 2 mm then it is inconclusive and if the uh, conversion of type 3 pattern to type 2 after sodium channel blocker uh, is given then this is also considered as inconclusive. So, drug induced SC elevation to a value more than 2 mm should raise the possibility of Brugada syndrome when one or more clinical criteria is present which I have told previously. Coming to the clinical features, all too often syncope and sudden cardiac death is the most common symptom in patient with Brugada syndrome. The mean age at which symptoms first appear in affected individual is the third and the fourth decade. The syncope and sudden cardiac death resulting from the ventricular fibrillation most often initiated by a short coupled premature ventricular complexes. Even presentation with monomorphic ventricular tachycardia is reported usually seen in uh, OC and FIA variant carriers. The prevalence of atrial arrhythmias in Brugada syndrome it almost accounts for 10%. These symptoms are precipitated by various factors such as fever, certain drugs, uh, large meals and alcohol. The drugs which precipitate Brugada syndrome are sodium channel blockers, phenothiazines, uh, TCAs, SSRIs, uh, calcium and beta blockers. Clinical report indicates that the sudden death in patient with Brugada syndrome most commonly occur during sleep that is in the early morning hours. Although female have a bimodal distribution, commonly experience their first event during the childhood and then later in life. Coming to the mechanism how Brugada syndrome happens, generally voltage gated sodium channel are the transmembrane protein which are responsible for the uh, electrical signaling of the neuromuscular cell. Cardiac depolarization mainly occurs as a result of sodium channel 
activation. This sodium channel consists of two units that is alpha and beta subunit. Activation phase involves conformational change in the alpha subunit. Brugada syndrome is primarily due to loss of function variant in SCN 5A gene. This gene encodes for the alpha subunit. This variant sodium channel shows evidence of defective gating property that is activation and or uh, inactivation but also reduce trafficking to the cell membrane. Dysfunctional uh, sodium channel results in later activation and earlier inactivation with subsequent shortening of the action potential. The resultant effect is a reduction of the peak sodium influx with the slowing of the upstroke that is phase 0 of the action potential. It has been shown that this sodium channel uh, function is augmented by the change in the ambient temperature. This becomes especially evident in Brugada syndrome uh, caused by gene variant affecting the sodium channel with additional shortening of the action potential uh, during high temperature. So Brugada syndrome it is primarily a depolarization disorder due to the reduced sodium influx and conduction discontinuity. Along with this patient is also noted to have cardiac structural changes. Cardiac neural crest cells are important for the development of the outflow tract, the conduction system, the great arteries and the neighboring structures. Furthermore, even this cardiac neural crest cells, uh, it expresses connexin 43 which is important in providing electric coupling between the cardi cardiomyocytes. So it is shown that they have, the patient with Brugada syndrome have increased collagen fibrosis within the anterior RBOT along with presence of inflammatory infiltrates and reduction in connexin 43 which is responsible for the electrical coupling between the cardiomyocytes. These changes, these changes correlate with the areas of low voltage and presence of the abnormal fractionated electrograms. Targeted ablation of these sites may correct the phenotypic ECG changes and prevent ventricular arrhythmia. Coming to drug challenge, how it is done and what are the drugs used? Drug challenge should be performed with continuous monitoring along with defibrillator and advanced coronary life support at hand. Accurate lead positions and uh, venous axis must be ascertained. The drugs used are Ajmalin, Flicanide and Procanamide. Ajmalin is used at the dose of 1 mg per kg body weight. Uh, which is given at 10 mg per minute. Lecanide, it is used at the dose of 2 mg per kg, max 150 mg in 10 minutes and procanamide 10 mg per kg given at 100 mg per minute. This drug exaggerates the ST segment elevation or unmask it when it is initially absent. Drug administration should be stopped when the test is positive or when the ventricular arrhythmias are evident and when significant QRS widening is observed more than 30%. Serious ventricular arrhythmias including ventricular fibrillation may occur during the test. Immediate discontinuation of drug is required. Isoproteinol infusion might be needed to treat arrhythmias which is given at a dose of 1 to 3 microgram per minute. Next coming to electrophysiological studies, a complete EPS is recommended in all symptomatic patients. It helps in risk stratification and in some cases it is required to establish the diagnosis. Next coming to genetic testing, presently only testing for variant in the SCN 5A gene is done. If it is negative then other genes is considered when two or more family members are phenotypically affected. Next coming to family screening, screening of family members for Brugada syndrome must include all the first degree relatives diagnosed with Brugada syndrome or those with otherwise unexplained sudden cardiac death. In adults, one-time screening is probably adequate if sodium channel blocker provocation testing is negative. In pediatric, generally sodium channel blocker testing is not done due to the possible higher risk of adverse event with sodium channel blocker in pediatric. It is recommended for standard and highly DCG screening at age 3 and if negative, additional screening every 3 years until age 15 is done because of possible age-related phenotypic expression. Next coming to MRI. MRI can be considered in complex cases to delineate RBOT structure and function. Next coming to the scoring system, uh, this is a uh, recently developed Shanghai score which includes four parameters, the ECG changes, clinical history, the family history and the genetic testing. The ECG findings include spontaneous type 1 ECG, fever induced type 1 ECG, type 2 and 3 ECG that is converted to type 1 with sodium channel blocker. Clinical history includes unexplained cardiac death or documented VT or VF, nocturnal agonal respiration, suspected arrhythmia, suspected arrhythmic syncope, syncope of unclear etiology, uh, atrial flutter of fibrillation age less than 30 years without clear etiology. In family history, it includes first or second degree relative with definitive Brugada syndrome, suspicious sudden cardiac death in first degree or second degree relative, unexplained sudden cardiac death with age less than 45 years in first or second degree relative, genetic testing 
probable pathogenic mutation in Brugada syndrome susceptibility gene. So, highest point in each category is taken. If the score is more than 3.5, then it is considered as probable or definitive Brugada syndrome. If the score is between 2 to 3, then it is considered as possible Brugada syndrome. And if the score is less than 2, then it is non-diagnosed. Next, coming to the differential diagnosis, many of the conditions that can be mistaken for Brugada syndrome also cause syncope as a common symptom. The conditions include QT prolongation, WPW syndrome, pulmonary embolism, sick sinus syndrome, early repolarization syndrome, electrolyte abnormalities and atrial fibrillation. The initial medical management includes avoidance of the drug that can prov provoke Brugada ECG changes which I have already mentioned, rapid antipyretic treatment for fever, avoidance of alcohol and cocaine, rapid intervention for acute metabolic syndrome wherein hypokalemia, hyperkalemia and metabolic acidosis have been reported to uncover Brugada ECG changes. All patients should be educated regarding modulating and precipitating factors and must be told to avoid this. ICD is indicated in symptomatic patient. EPS may be performed in asymptomatic patient with spontaneous type 1 ECG. Quinidine has high rate of effectiveness in the electrophysiology laboratory and has been used to suppress ventricular fibrillation in severe clinical scenarios. It mainly prolongs the phase 0 of the action potential. It is also shown to inhibit the potassium current throughout the duration of action potential and calcium current during the phase 2 of action potential. In patients who experience electrical storm with Brugada syndrome, IV isoproteranol is recommended. Phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors can also be used as an additional pharmacologic therapy that is silastrozol and mildrenone. They also act by potentiation of the calcium current. Coming to radiofrequency ablation, it, radiofrequency ablation can be used as an adjunctive treatment in patients with uh, breakthrough adverse events despite medical treatment or in those who are intolerant to medical therapy. A combined epicardial and endocardial approach allows for epicardial substrate modification and endocardial elimination of trigger. Next coming to this algorithm in which patient if uh, suspected or documented Brugada syndrome, if the patient has a type 1 ECG, genetic testing must be done. If this patient has a cardiac arrest or recently unexplained syncope, if yes, patient must be assessed for ICD. If the patient is a candidate for ICD, yes, then ICD must be inserted. If no, then quinidine or catheter ablation must be considered. In case if the patient despite ICD had recurrent VT and VF storm, then quinidine or isoproteranol or catheter ablation must be done. If the patient didn't have a cardiac arrest or recently unexplained syncope, then patient must be observed without therapy and uh, EP studies must be done for risk stratification. Hope this shall be useful. Thank you.